So in the last video, we augmented our 16-byte RAM module with an address register, a 4-bit address register, uh, that we can then switch between the address register and our uh, programming mode, which allows us to set the address with these dip switches. And we can see the address here, and we can see the memory contents here. In this video, what I want to do is do something similar for the, the actual data that we're storing in memory. So right now, we have these eight bits, which right now I've just connected down here to, uh, looks like they're all set to ones. But instead, we want to connect these uh, to, to some uh, sort of input that's either going to take the data to store off the bus or uh, take it from dip switches, so very similar to this. And so again, we're going to use the 74 LS 157s to switch between um, the dip switches and the bus for the data that we're storing in memory. And so again, we want to give ourselves a little bit more room, so I'm going to use another breadboard here, and I'm going to connect it right here because we're going to do this right below here. And actually, I'm also going to connect below this the um, uh, instruction register, which we built in a previous video. Uh, and we're not really going to be using the instruction register at all for this, but um, just when we put the final computer together, this is a good place for it. So we'll just we'll just have that there. So like I said, what we want is we want some dip switches here. When we're in programming mode, we'll be able to set the address here. We'll be able to set the data here uh, to write data into memory. Um, and that's how we get our program into memory before we actually start running uh, things on the computer. And then to switch between uh, using the switches to program the computer and uh, actually being able to let the computer put things in its memory on its own from the bus, we want to use those uh, 74 LS 157 uh, chips that we that we looked at in the last video. Um, so it has these A and B inputs and a Y output, and, and you select between A and B using the select uh, pin here. Since we have eight bits here instead of the four, um, instead of using one of these chips, we'll we'll need two. And we'll start, of course, by hooking up the power and ground for each of these chips. And then, uh, just as we did up here, we have this uh, pin 15, which is the strobe input, connected to ground. Um, and that's essentially just kind of an enable line for the whole chip. So uh, whenever that's low, the chip is enabled. So I'll go ahead and connect pin 15 here to ground. And this one's going to be a little bit tricky because I have these LEDs in the way, but let me pull this out for a moment, and we can kind of slide that in, and put the LED back in there, hopefully in the right place. <laughs> okay, so that's hooked up. And then next what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the outputs. I've got four lines on, on each of these, so we have a total of eight lines that we're selecting between either the dip switches or, uh, well, it'll be the bus that we end up connecting into the, uh, the B inputs here. Uh, but first I'll start with connecting the outputs of these into the, the, the data inputs of our memory, so that whichever source we're selecting from, the output is going to go into our memory, so we're writing that, that byte into memory. Okay, so I think that is everything. So I can pull these out. And now all of the outputs of our, of our selectors uh, should be going to the data inputs of our memory. So we should be able, able to, well, once we hook up our dip switches and our bus, we should either, either be able to program the memory from the dip switches or you know, data coming in from the bus should be able to find its way into the memory. So now to hook up the dip switches, it's going to be very similar to what we did up here, which is we're going to be using the dip switches to connect the, imp uh, the A inputs on both of these to ground when the switch is on. Uh, so for example, this will connect the A input of this first, uh, this first bit, or the sort of the most significant bit here, to ground when the switch is on. And of course for that to work, I need to connect this side of it to ground. So when that's on, then it connects ground to that input, and then when it's off, it's disconnected, uh, which means that the input's going to default to high because all of the inputs on these on these have uh, pull-up resistors built into these chips. If it's not connected, the input will be high. Um, and again, just like we did here, uh, because it's kind of unintuitive for the switch to be down, meaning high, and up, meaning uh, zero, or so down is a one, up is a zero, um, I'm going to just flip this switch upside down. So that way, 
when the switches are down, they're on. And then when we flip the switch up, the uh, switch turns off. And so when it's off, it's not connected to ground, which means it's going to be a one. And when it's on, when it's down, it is connected to ground and it's a zero. So I'll go ahead and connect the, the rest of these. And of course, for these inputs up here, then I'll just connect the uh, connect them through the switch the other way and connect the grounds down here. And then they just connect up into these pins up here rather than trying to run the wires back and forth. Okay, and that should be connecting our dip switches up to the A inputs of, of the 74LS157. Now the B inputs of the 74LS157s, so, so the A inputs are when we're in uh, programming mode. So in programming mode, we set our address here, we set our, um, our data value here, and then we can write using this signal, and I'll hook up a, a push button for this in a, in a moment, uh, use this signal to put whatever uh, value we set here into the address uh, that we set here. And that's how we program the computer. That's how we put data into the, into the memory before we start the computer. When we go into run mode, then uh, when we want to write data into the memory, it's going to be coming from the bus. And the bus, and then when we, when we want to read data from memory, it goes out to the bus through these tri-state buffers. But to get data in from the bus, um, we want to bring that down into the B inputs of our 74LS157, our, our selectors here. So I'm going to go ahead and hook that up now. Okay, so that now connects the bus, which, which is going to be connected here. Uh, on these eight bits that, that extends that bus into the selectors here. Uh, so that'll be the normal run mode. But then when we're in program mode, uh, instead of reading data from the bus, we'll be reading data from our dip switches here. And so the way the programming will work is we'll, we'll switch over to program mode, set the address we want to program here, set the data that we want to put in that address here, and then we want to toggle our write. And of course, to do that, it would be nice to have a little push button switch. So I've got that here. Stick that in there. And so this will just be a little button that we can push to uh, write the data. So once we put the address that we want to write it to and put the data here, push that button and it'll write it uh, to, to there. Uh, but of course, again, we want to be able to switch between using this button to write to memory and the computer being able to have a control signal that's going to come from the control logic of the computer to tell it that we want to write data into the memory. Uh, so this, this write signal that's going into the memory now um, has to be switched depending on whether we're in program mode or not. Uh, so, of course, to do that, we're going to uh, use another 74LS157, which I'll put right here. So this uh, write signal is going to come from the output of one of the one of the selectors in this 150 in this 74 LS 157. Um, actually, I should have maybe connected our power here first. Get that underneath there. So power and of course ground. And then again, pin 15 of this uh, 74 LS 157 is the essentially the enable signal. So if we, we want to set that low so that uh, the chip is enabled, it's a low active low uh, signal there. So that that's that. And so when we're in program mode, we want the, this push button to, uh, to essentially take the program si or the write uh, signal here low whenever we push it. So we'll connect the uh, switch uh, from, uh, from ground through the switch and then into the, uh, the A input of our 74LS157. And so the A input is, is the input that we'll be using when we're in program mode. And then when we're in run mode, um, this is going to be a little bit different. In run mode, we want to uh, essentially take the signal from 
uh, from the control logic. So the control logic in the computer, which we'll get to in, in future videos, um, at some point while programs are executing, it's going to say, hey, I want to write to memory. Uh, and so it'll, it'll set this write signal. Um, but we don't want it to necessarily write immediately when the write signal gets set, because we want the write signal to say, okay, on the next clock cycle, we're going to write to memory. But then we want to wait for that clock cycle. So really, uh, we want the write signal to be a combination of the, the write signal from the control logic as well as the clock signal, um, and actually specifically the rising edge of the clock. So what I'm going to do is essentially AND together using an AND gate, uh, the clock signal and the control signal saying uh, that we want to write to memory. So I'm going to use a 74LS00. Um, which, which actually is not an AND gate, it's a NAND gate. And the reason I want a NAND gate is because this is an active low. So a NAND gate is going to say when the write signal is high and the clock signal is high, then output a zero. And the zero is the thing that, that tells the, uh, the memory, the 74LS189s in this case, to actually uh, you know, take the data from the bus and write it. So first, let me hook up the power for the 74LS00, the NAND gate. Uh, we're just going to use one of the NAND gates on here. So the pinout is pin 1 and pin 2 are the inputs, and pin 3 is the output. So I'm going to hook pin 3 here, over here, to the B input of our selector. So hook that to the B input of our, of our selector. So Whenever this NAND gate is outputting a zero and we're in run mode, uh, then the selector will, will feed that zero on through to the memory and we'll, we'll end up writing uh, whatever, whatever data is coming in. So one of these inputs is going to be the control signal that's coming from our, uh, our control logic, which we'll you know, touch on in a, in a or we'll, we'll build it in a, in a future video and, and go into it. Um, so when that's low, then we're not writing. And then if that goes high, then we will be writing something into memory. Um, so we'll have that low. The other input is going to be from our clock. I'll go ahead and connect this up to our, our clock signal. Just kind of bring that, bring that back down here. And so this is saying when the clock is high and our, our write signal is high, then this goes low, um, which then is passed through. So I think we can go ahead and test this out and see, see what happens. So if we power it up, uh, so we can see our, our clock is running there. And we see, of course, we have some random, random data here. If we go into write mode, uh, we can set our address. So if we set the address to zero, uh, this should write whatever value we have on our dip switches here. So we have all zeros, so we hit that. Nothing happens. Hmm. Oh, of course. So we don't, we're not actually selecting here. Um, I, neglected to, to connect the actual select pins. So remember these 74LS157s, um, we want to select whether we're programming or writing. And of course we have this hooked up, you know, pin one is the select pin. You can see pin one here is connected over to this red LED, which goes low when we go into, into write mode. We need to bring that, that signal down here so that when we switch to write mode, uh, these guys are also selected in write mode. So let me Disconnect power and go ahead and do that. And so that should tie all of our selects for all four of the 74LS157s, so the three down here and the one up here. Uh, to the same switch here. And so I think that should be almost everything for the RAM module. So I'll go ahead and pause here, and in the next video, we'll power it up and test things out a little bit more thoroughly.